Hello and welcome to video lecture series in sociology. Today we are going to discuss chapter 8 titled as Social Moments from your textbook Social Change and Development in India. We have divided this chapter into 6 parts. So far we have discussed about the definition and features of social moments, how social moments have been decisive in bringing about social change. We have discussed about types of social moments, particularly the new and old social moments about civil society and theories of social moments. Today we are going to discuss about stages in the life of a social moments and various examples of social moments. Now you know as globalization is changing and reshaping people's lives all over the globe, new structures and patterns are emerging. These new structures and patterns pose a different and a new set of challenges to people. The new problem and concerns are no longer traditional and limited in nature as it used to be in the past. The new problems are represented by new age social movements. The new age social movements account for the massive and rapid social changes brought by the process of globalization. New social movements are quite diverse in nature as compared to the past. Instead of focusing only on issues of economic inequality and social discrimination, the new social movements are focusing on social and cultural issues. They focus on quality of life, on self-determination among the marginalized or discriminated sections of the society, say Dalits in Indian society. Unlike past, a majority of participants in the new social movements belong to educated middle class. They usually challenge the legitimacy of institutions of power. They have both global and local appeal and orientation. Although their focus may be diverse, yet these diverse issues are often interrelated. Say for instance, eco-feminists associate environmental issues with patriarchy or labor rights and are seen within the broad framework of human rights, talking about the rights of the women. Social movements do not develop or grow randomly. Despite differences in issues that all these social movements raise, social movements roughly follow the same process of development. These are called as the stages within the life of a social movement. The research shows that social movements have a specific pattern of development, where one can identify certain stages within the social movement, that is, from the birth to the culmination or end of the social movement. The life of a social movement from its emergence to its end can be analyzed in terms of certain stages. What are these stages? Let us discuss them one by one for better understanding. The first stage is the emergence, obviously the birth of the social movement. This is the preliminary stage when inception of the movement takes place. Social movements usually start with a feeling of discontent among people. This feeling develops into greater resentment among a substantial number of people who may feel they are relatively deprived, excluded or discriminated or marginalized in society on the basis of economic, political or cultural factors or resources. At this stage, some people emerge as leaders who mobilize, organize and guide people to take an action in order to press their demands and change the system. The second stage is called as the stage of consolidation or coalescence. This is a stage of greater association among members of the movement. At this stage in the life of the social movements, the members or participants organize themselves and start raising awareness among people regarding the issue that they are fighting for. The members may acquire a formal organizational structure. Raising of awareness among people may also mean mobilizing resources, adopting and involving strategies such as media campaign to spread the issue among general people. The third important stage in the life of a social movement is that of institutionalization. At this stage, the movement becomes formally organized. It acquires structure of a bureaucracy with clearly defined roles and responsibilities, a hierarchy and a division of labor between members part of this organization now. The leaders who initially lead the movement on the basis of their personal characteristics are now chosen on the basis of their qualification and eligibility such as in rational legal authoritative systems. This is the time when it is most likely that movement may lose its vigor and strength as bureaucratization may alienate some of its members. The last stage in the life of a social movement is its death or the decline of social movement. 
even if social movements may run for years still they have to come to an end they do not disappear or vanish without trace social movements see a logical conclusion and conclusion does not necessarily mean that they become successful only but they can have other ends also apart from success what are the various conclusions or ends that can be seen as the fate of a social movement the first one is obviously a social movement can succeed the cause or issue for which they fight might be accepted formal laws may be passed to ensure that the demands of the people are met for example women had to demand and fight for voting rights in a large number of countries world over their demands were subsequently met when getting right to vote the movement came to an end this is an example of success of a social movement the second logical end could be co-optation which means to assimilate into one's own group at times the people in power or authority may try to weaken a movement by adopting either a partial or a mild or soft version of the agenda put forward by the members of the social movement they adopt strategy to weaken the movement by offering the leaders some lucrative positions and buy their interest such a move can create conflict between the members of the social movement and hence the strength of the movement may break down or it may die the third possible end to a movement can happen by the displacement of the goal now what do we mean by this as you know that social changes occur slowly it takes its own course of time and at times authorities and polity is very slow to respond to the demands of the people a particular movement may run for years without any output in such a case it is difficult to maintain the initial level of enthusiasm and morale among people or members of the social movement if the result takes some time to come out then the members may tend to lose focus and patience some of them may start abandoning the cause altogether displacement of goal or shift in focus can occur when movement concentrates more on maintaining and running its organizational setup that is formal rationality rather than the cause it intends to focus upon yet another possible conclusion of a social movement can be fragmentation or division of movement some social movements after initial stages split or get divided into separate social movements or smaller movements within the greater social movement members who initially share similar views and have consensus on the nature structure and goal of the movement may later disagree on alliance modes of action leadership organizational structure sharing of roles and responsibility at times and also about strategies to pursue the movement hence what happens when conflict becomes impossible to manage or explodes then movement might get divided into separate movements with different focus and demand from different set of people or factions within the social movement some people may benefit from such division but remember the overall purpose gets defeated in such case when fragmentation occurs a movement can never succeed or be effective if it cannot remain cohesive or if it is not able to mobilize substantial number of people fragmentation brings end to the original movement and is damaging for it yet another possible end can come because of repression of the movement some movements are repressed using force when they become a major source of instability and threat to the existing structure the state or authorities use force to repress the movement like arresting the members imprisonment of the leaders surveillance or censors over media if it is being used by the members of the social movement ban over public gathering and even shoot at sight in some cases are examples of such cases where repression brings end to the social movement Indian nationalist movement repression of anti apartheid movement in south africa are examples of repression the social movements are of various types now so far we have discussed about various theories various types of movements or the various stages within the life of the social movement now in the subsequent discussions we'll discuss some of the examples about social movements and let's begin by discussing the ecological movements first at the core of ecological movement is the ideology of protection of environment the movement has come into existence since 1960s although it was always there in the past that is consciousness towards the protection of environment however the formal movement came into existence since 1960s only 
Modernity no doubt brought industrialization, urbanization and development. But this development all happened at the cost of the environment. Growth of industry, development required raw material. For all this, there was an unchecked extraction and use of natural resources. To cater to the need of rising population, relentless pursuit for development, ecology and environmental resources have been exploited beyond repair. This kind of development has also been criticized for being limited only to particular sections of the society which are rich and have access to resources. So, the so-called development has been uneven and unequal. The big projects in the name of development have made many people homeless. Their sources of livelihood have been destroyed. Dams, industries, special economic zones have been established by displacing farmers who had been cultivating land for ages and for centuries almost. An unintended consequence of all this development has been environmental pollution or degradation. Once again, in some cases, the pollution has gone beyond the ability of human agencies to repair the situation. Look at the condition of two main rivers in North India, the Ganges, the Ganga and Yamna. Their water is unfit for consumption or any other use. Large number of plant and animal species are getting extinct because of rapid deforestation. There are only some of the issues that are part of the bigger environmental problems humanity is facing today. Ecological movements emerged world over addressing these issues and concerns only. There have been many movements that have attempted to work to arrest the environmental degradation beyond a limit. Let us take case of Chipko movement in India. Chipko movement started in foothills of Himalaya and is an example of an ecological movement and environmental concerns against the logic of development. When government gave forest to the contractors to cut down the trees for timber, villagers, particularly women, stepped forward to prevent the forest from being cut, as it was their primary source of subsistence. They got firewood, fodder and other necessities for everyday life from the forest only. These women hugged the trees when contractors started cutting them. This is why it is called as Chipko. This conflict placed the livelihood needs of poor villagers against the government's desire to generate revenue by selling the timber from the forest. The economy of subsistence was now standing against the economy of profit. The Chippo movement raised the issue of ecological sustainability. While survival of the villagers dependent on the forest, the villagers valued the forest as a form of ecological wealth that benefits not just them but all the people surrounding the area. It was also an expression of anger of villagers in the hills against the distant government headquarters in the plains that were not paying attention to their needs and their concerns. Chipko movement in India represents a combination of political, ecological and economic concerns affecting particular sections of society that experience relative deprivation. Whenever masses feel that their rights to land and environment have been suppressed, the anger gets manifest in the form of protest or a social movement. Apart from these, there are several significant environmental related movements against dam and irrigation projects, against power projects, mining and industrial plants, special economic zones, military bases, expansion of railways and airport projects. Some of these Environmental movements include Silent Valley Movement in Kerala, Narmada Bachao Andolan, Tehri Dam Virodhi Samiti in Uttarakhand. It was also a movement. Another movement against Enron in Dabol in Maharashtra. Now, apart from these environmental movements, let us take some examples of tribal movements. A number of tribal movements in India have emerged around environmental issues only. They are different tribal groups spread all across India. Many tribal movements are located largely in the tribal belt in the central India, in the Jharkhand, Chhattisgarh, Madhya Pradesh and adjoining regions inhabited by tribes such as Santhals, Hos, Orans and Mundas. Adivasis particularly in Jharkhand have been experiencing marginalization and injustice for years. They were exploited by the migrant traders and moneylenders who settled in these areas and appropriated wealth and benefits leading to impoverishment of the local people or the Adivasis. 
the resentment against or the anger against this injustice culminated into a movement for demanding a separate state. The core issue against which the tribals mobilized themselves for acquisition of land for large irrigation projects, mining and firing ranges or collection of loans also, rent and cooperative dues, nationalization of resources and forest produce. The natural resources and land belong to Adivasi communities but it was being appropriated by the others, those who had come from the outside. These resources were part of their life which they did not want to leave in the name of development because development did not benefit them at all. It was uneven leading to inequality. In fact, they felt left out in the process of development. Even in the northeast part of India, there was a discontent among major tribal groups. Being conscious of their distinct identity and traditional autonomy, many of the tribal groups were not willing to be part of general region in northeast in Assam. These tribes were able to maintain their own worldview and social and cultural institutions with little external influence. One central issue that binds all these tribal movements from different parts of the country is the issue of tribal rights over forest and land and that is related to environment and ecology only. Here we can see ecological issues are being combined with issues of cultural identity and political representation and underdevelopment of certain regions. What do these examples show? These examples demonstrate that the boundary between the old and new social movement is not clear cut as one can think of. It also shows that such social movements emerge around a mix of social, cultural, economic and political issues. We have seen that among both Chipko and tribal movements in different parts of India, the central concern was ecology or environment, particularly related to forest and land, the source of subsistence for a large number of people and the source of livelihood also. To conclude, let's summarize what we discussed in this lecture class. We started our discussion by understanding the life cycle or stages in the life cycle of a social movement in terms of its birth, growth, institutionalization and its death or culmination. We discussed about the possible outcomes of social movements from success at one end and failure at the other end. We discussed about the examples of Chipko and tribal movements showing the similarity of concern between these movements, a combination of old and new movement. In the next lecture class, we will discuss about class and caste based movements in India. Till then, you can enjoy reading this part of the chapter. Thank you.